Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Pratik Joshi, Certified Consultant and Architect on Big Data Technology as well as Cloud Technology. To continue on our session for the interview questions and ask the series for AWS, let's cover one more service today that is Amazon S3. Let's look into the detail of S3 and I'll give you a brief introduction about the new service called S3. S3 stands for Simple Storage Services. So before we go into the detailed description and the definition provided by AWS, let me give you a very simple idea and terminology what is S3 meant for. Uh, the best example to understand about S3 is the folder which you will create in your local system, local laptop. Let's say you have a laptop and you created a folder, you are putting few files onto that. That is how S3 works on AWS. The folder which you are created that is going to be there in your local machine. However, if you are working with S3 application service of AWS, it is going to be there on your cloud machine. The same way you create a folder in your local machine, you are putting few files into that folder. Again, you can create another folder inside that folder and so on. You can go and iterate up to the end number of folder creation. The same way you can do the same process onto S3 also. So in S3, you have the power to create a folder. You have the power to put few files onto that and you have the power to retrieve that files from that S3 folder provided in your cloud machine. To access the files which you have kept into your folder, you are going giving the absolute part of your folder, correct? The same way, let's say if you have some files stored onto S3, you have to provide the URL endpoint which is uh, given to you by the S3 service. By using that endpoint, you are able to access the services given and the file which you kept into your S3 folder. So irrespective of whatever the iteration folder you have created, every single file will have an endpoint URL created by S3 itself. So you just have to use that URL to access that file. So programmatically also by using that file, by using that URL, you can access the file which you have uploaded onto your S3. You can use it into the uh, your code, your uh, local machine and uh, the same way you can complete whatever the implementation you wanted to have to upload or download the file structure onto cloud the uh, feature and the requirement you will be able to achieve by using the simple storage service that is called amazon s3 now this is a very high level of definition let's look into the deep uh, deep deep definition provided from the original document of aws so uh, it is saying that S3 stands for simple storage services, the same which we uh, already covered. Amazon S3 has a simple web service interface that you can use to store and retrieve any amount of data, correct? Any at any time for anywhere on the web. So let's say once you have updated or uploaded any specific file onto S3 uh, bucket, bucket is the uh, alias of folder. Okay, so whenever you have uploaded or uh, updated any of the file onto S3, you will have that control to access that file irrespective of anywhere in from the world up except you have that, uh, uh, you know, uh, accessibility of that file, permission to access that file. It gives any developer access to the same highly scalable, reliable, fast and inexpensive data storage infrastructure. Now what do we mean by inexpensive data storage infrastructure? I'm going to cover that point, uh, point onto the latest slide. Unlike the other storage systems like Unix file system, HDFS, etc. which are based on having folders and files, the S3 is based on the concept of key and an object. So every file will have a key and the respective object uh, denomination for that specific file you have to use that key and object to retrieve and to get the access on top of that file 
so that file will be stored onto AWS as a JSON document that are attached to an IAM identity. Now, what is IAM identity? To understand IAM identity, I have another video. The link is provided on top. You can go to that video and understand what is the IAM identity meant for. Amazon S3 stores data as object within a bucket, which is a logical unit of storage. So we can say, a bucket is a folder. An object consists of a file and optionally any metadata that describes that file. So that is not mandatory. It is an optional to keep a metadata for the disc description of that file. To continue on the same, store an object in Amazon S3, you upload the file you wanted to store to a bucket. When you upload a file, you can set permissions onto the object as well as on the metadata. So this is the same topic which we were discussing about. Let's say you are a developer, you wanted to store few files onto S3. So what you can do is programmatically you can access the bucket which you have created and you can upload the file onto that bucket. The same way programmatically also you can give the permissions that whom all can able to access that file. So this is programmatically uh, doable as well as you can go and do that same thing on the permissions part of the S3 bucket. I'll give you a practical walkthrough of the S3 service on AWS part at the end of this PPT. Customers are not charged for creating buckets but are charged for storing the object in a bucket and for transferring objects in and out of pocket. So this is a very important question in terms of the interview. Let's say how and what will be the charge when you will uh, at what service you are actually chargeable. So it is clearly mentioning that while creating a bucket on AWS S3 it is not chargeable. But let's say if you are uploading or downloading means transferring an object in and out from the bucket it will charge you as per the uh, as per the norms and the law created on AWS so I, I will suggest to go to that page first and to understand about the charges before you do the transaction I'm pretty sure that will be minimal but still you have to take care of that and also I I always advise to my uh, uh, subscribers that whenever you are working on AWS, make sure to delete every folder, make sure to decontinue or terminate your instance after you completing your uh, patch of uh, exploration. Okay, so let's say if you have brought a code to upload and download a file onto S3, once you are completing that understanding and part and code of that, you have the fair understanding of it. Please make sure to delete your bucket as well as all the files from that S3 location so that you won't be uh, built for that uh, specific uh, transition. Now to go into deeper, let's have a questions. What can be the questions on S3? So I'm putting these questions in terms of the interview perspective. There can be a more or less questions according to the requirement but these are the very uh, intermediate level of and expert level of questions which you should uh, know before you go or opt an AWS interview. Explain AWS S3 bucket. You are very much familiar with that now. What is the maximum size of S3 bucket? Now this is a very important question. So S3 bucket you can store unlimited volume of data and number of object. A single Amazon S3 object can be a size of 5 terabyte. That is a max size. In single upload request, you can put an object up to 5 GB, but you must have to enable multi file upload capability. So, this is a very important point to make sure that 5 GB object size can be transferred in a one single request, but you have to make sure to make it enable the multi-part upload capacity which is there in, in the options and the properties of your S3. How can you send a request to Amazon S3? So Amazon S3 is a REST service and you can send a request by using the REST API or the AWS SDK wrapper library that wrap the underlying Amazon S3 REST API. 
To understand this point in a more detail, I have already prepared a practical uh, video where I have connected my Java program to an AWS S3 bucket and from there I am uploading as well as downloading the file. So uh, this is the link which I have provided on top of that. I am. Uh, it will be pretty good if you go through that link you will give you a very fair understanding that how programmatically you can achieve and access s3 so it will be very easy for you to understand the concept of s3 as well as on the point of view of interview how many bucket can you create on aws by default so by default you have the capacity and capability to create 100 bucket in each of your aws account what are the storage class available on, on s3 now to answer this question there are multiple storage class available one is like s3 standard s3 standard infrequent access s3 reduce redundancy storage and amazon glacier so to define this and to give the best uh, answer on this you can understand that amazon s3 standard is the ideal uh, folder class available where frequent number of uploads and downloads are available and you will get your response in a pretty good amount of time let's say if the requirement is not that much high you can go for infrequent access like when people are not accessing it too much to get the uh, data out but let's say at some point of time at a specific scale or a specific time the access is too high so you can understand it in a way of load balancing so at